Okay. Okay, welcome everybody and welcome Ellie Lieberman, um, one of our greatest graduates from the previous CyberWise cohort. Um, Ellie was, he came in already, he's a very experienced professional, that's the truth. I can't say we made the man because he came in as, a, as an experienced person. But, but you are a great example of a person that we helped, you know, move from one ecosystem into another. And you did it really successfully and you got a job already during the program and a company yeah, yeah. Awesome. that we believe in. So we're really, really proud. I'm really proud and happy to present Ellie, who is really generously sharing um, of his time. And Ellie's really an expert. He's first of all a teacher. He's taught for Turo, I know, computer science and so forth. And so he's a wonderful teacher and he's gonna be teaching about how to leverage uh, LinkedIn and I'll let him tell his story and, and that too. So go ahead, Ellie. Hi, hi all. Um, you can, uh, you know, Jonathan, uh, oh, uh, Jonathan, anybody who wants it, you can share my uh, contact information, et cetera, et cetera. If, if I forget to post it later, um, just in case anybody is interested in that, uh, in reaching out later. Um, hi, so uh, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Hanna. I actually, as Jonathan uh, mentioned, I, uh, I made a complete uh, transition. So uh, I was a little bit of a perspective and not to, to dwell on it. I was in mortgage and, and finance and uh, while I was in mortgage and finance, I was also always involved in technology projects. This was in the US. I'm, uh, I made Aliyah about five years ago. I uh, looked for finance and mortgage and those type of roles, not worth spending too much time dwelling on that. Um, and I considered tra transitioning to something in technology. First, I thought it would be data. And then um, I saw the uh, messages from, uh, from Tomet about cybersecurity. And I pretty much grilled uh, Jonathan, Leo, Yitzchak. Is Yitzchak still, still? OK, so pretty much uh, everybody who works at Tomet, plus some of the former students to make sure <laughs> That there was a connection between the classes and the uh, and uh, internships and working positions and Baruch Hashem, I'm a uh, working living example of that. I can I did a complete career change. I mean, I did work on technology projects before, but as a, as a business person, so I wasn't uh, very very technical. I was somewhat technical because I had. Um, I did work on, on projects, data projects, et cetera, but it was always a business ownership. It was never in, I never worked for the technology department, so to speak. I was working as a finance business manager, et cetera, et cetera. Took the course, you're well into the course, but just so you know that it does work. Um, so that's, uh, that's my bikitzer. That's how uh, I landed here. I thought that um, it was attractive to me that there was, that the courses were very well connected to the job market. Okay, so uh, you can stop me along the way. Um, uh, Jonathan shared earlier a few minutes ago with me that you're well along the uh, the program. I started in October or, so, or August, so I was, wasn't sure which uh, which semester, so to speak. Ellie, this Ellie we have both groups here. Leo's oh. group for us that started in August are also in this meeting, so you have a combined group. Oh, the whole range. Okay, got it. Um, okay, so we'll uh, we'll put it all we'll put it all, all out there. Uh, it's all good. So um, actually, one of my side jobs is I teach. I teach for Turo. I teach technology, but not nothing related to cyber. Just you know, Microsoft, etc. Excel, SQL, stuff like that. Um, uh, so actually, for the ones that just started recently, I think you get a very good background or so to speak buses for. Um, for work in this industry, but as uh, you've probably uh, been remote, probably start reminded earlier, and certainly those of you who are finishing now that you're gonna have a lot of work to do. I still have a lot of work to do, uh, but thankfully I got connected, et cetera. I got into an internship. I got into a second internship that turned into the second internship was uh, I work now at a company called New Religion, and that came together with the expectations of full-time job. I'm still here, so it is a full-time job. Um, and ironically, I now am in charge of, uh, so to speak, um, interns, trainees, et cetera, et cetera. Some, some. 
uh, long distance and remote. Uh, so I'll give you a, a minute about um, what I do and then talk about networking also because I guess there'll be different degrees of interest in how far along you're in the program. Um, so what I do, uh, so vis-a-vis -vis, um, the program, uh, somebody or other tell me if I'm not coming in clear, just somebody give me a shout out or Jonathan, please, or somebody. Um, so what I do, I work for a company called uh, New Religion. In a sentence, what they do is we, uh, they have a SaaS product, basically just translate that into online. We have an online product that checks websites for vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities in the industry, pretty much across no matter which piece of the industry is. Uh, vulnerabilities means somebody could deface, somebody could break, somebody could steal, somebody could do, lack of better words, wacky stuff, but includes all those different things. So I work for a company, specifically it's called the AppSec Market because it's applications, it's online, the SaaS type of applications like uh, what online banking, online, uh, any company that has a shopping cart, any company that has um, uh, food companies that have uh, are informational. So some of them you have to log in, some of them you don't have to log in in the industry is called that authenticated, non-authenticated. So we check all these, we have a product that um, our clients, uh, our clients get our product and they can check their websites for vulnerabilities. So actually what, what we do is uh, preventative, so to speak, preventative me medicine that we try to prevent um, websites from all these problems, uh, all these problems occurring. What that means is, what that means is that we check for all the holes in what's actively on the site. So not to go, go um, off a uh, tangent, but basically could be checking code with that, with so to speak code uh, as the developer is, is writing it. We don't do that. We look at a live website. We have something that's called a crawler or a web driver, all these other things are, um, that are actively go on a website and poke around and see if they can, um, we could break things or break into things. Up stuff. So that's what. Wait, uh, wait, you're busy with plugging the holes or trying to break in through the holes? Oh, you're nice. doing pen testing or okay. you're doing. So we do automated, what would you call automated pen testing? But there's really man, there's using a crawler, testing. right? We do man, there's manual and there's automated. So this isn't really a replacement for manual because there are companies, serious companies that do manual and then you know, they'll, they'll sit there for weeks trying to drive holes through. So what we do is automated. We try to, for, to keep it simple, we try to find the 90 and 95% of the stuff that uh, you need to plug and then you're gonna miss because you know, sometimes you look at, um, look at a site and you see one page, but if, uh, if you've had some exposure to Burp Suite, if you had it already or you're gonna have it uh, sometime soon, you'll see when a, web, when a web page comes up, not one web page, there could be 200 or 400 requests shooting across. That'll give you, that'll be your first headache. <laughs> Realizing that there's 200 or 400 of them shooting across uh, the screen. Okay, so, um, there's a lot of stuff going on. You'll figure out how to filter that. It's not as bad as it sounds. But uh, anyways, there's a lot of stuff. We try to, to catch, let's say the 90% or 85%, whatever that percentage is before it goes out because there's so many pages that are that come together to, to deliver the, so to speak, the user experience or the functionality that, uh, I mean, in theory, you could do, be doing a program or could be doing it by hand. There's no way, it's kind of like, you know, you know, once you learn how to add up numbers, no, no, uh, no accountant is using a calculator, is using by hand doing, um, adding up numbers. They're using Excel, a calculator, et cetera. You can't do it. <laughs> it's just too much. So we do that 90, 95%. And we have, you know, co-relationships with, let's say, um, manual web testers, and they, they make uh, referrals to us, et cetera, because you, can, you need really both. You need somebody who's going to, who's going to be doing the stuff that comes up 90% of the time, you're just never going to have the time to do it. And you also need somebody who's going to drill down, you know, manually. And that's something like the company would do once or twice a year. And the stuff that we do when it's done right, 
is some, that, something that, that they incorporate into their process. And every time they promote code, it's running in the background. And if we find something, it shoots off a ticket to Jira or somewhere else. They call that the CICD process. When they do a promotion or a build for code, it's uh, swept up, uh, our, our process is swept up in, in the group of processes that are running. If there are any problems, it's gonna, um, it's gonna shoot off, uh, um, if it's properly integrated, it's gonna shoot off tickets and, and um, tasks for folks to do. I'm gonna stop for a second if there are any questions. Um, so, okay. Of course, log4j. Everybody is asking us about log4j. So, log4j technically in our space is a what they call um, for like a coding level or something that the um, I forgot the technical just come tired, but um, it's uh, it's on the programming side. We go to this website already when things are when the wheels are churning. It's live, so that's more of a static uh, a static check. So that's not something really in our domain. Although our clients want it to be in a way because anything that comes up to say, well, you're, you're, you know, we're your client, you should help us, whatever. <laughs> but uh, it's actually not that way. There are companies that we make referrals to that are static, um, that review static codes so when programmer is doing what, you know, is coding is just like almost like spell check. They'll check the stuff because it's, uh, you know, they, they know straight off that that's, you know, like spell check knows that something is misspelled. They know that line of code is a bad line of has been uh, deprecated or something like that. So that's kind of where log for J uh, falls. Uh, we have a five minute uh, um, speech about it from one of our guys, if you really want to know, but that's it in a, in a sentence or two. Um, and he uses a lot more, a lot bigger words. Um, so how do you explain to your client that you don't necessarily take care of all these types of issues if it's from the coding source? Meaning because, because you're we saying that static code. we don't review static code. We're very explicit about it. That's not what we do. We go to a site as it, as it is up there when we start um, sending what they call uh, payloads. We attack it with payloads. We shoot something we see. Uh, we try to see if it's vulnerable to what they call SQL injection. We try to see if it's vulnerable to cross-site scripting where maybe just some, you know, not some simple examples, but could do real damage is, you know, you could chop, uh, if you follow the URL at the top of the screen after let's say a question mark, so those are parameters. There's a URL and then you could basically stuff in uh, questions, so to speak in the URL. So maybe you could stuff in stuff that's not expected. So that's what we do. That's not the only thing we do, but that's like a very tangible example. But how do you explain that to the client? Let's say now with this new vulnerability, you're saying that it's not the myth under your jurisdiction and they're saying that you want it to be because you're our security team, right? Sure, we have. I, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand why you're not dealing with it. Waiting it. They don't give up after one try. That's why we have a phone call, we have a sales guy, we have an email right. out to everybody. And it's still not over. But uh, that's how ultimately. I'm not sure if you saw my question. It was like on a day to day basis, you made a product and you're selling it, right? Because it's automatic. Yeah. So, how, like, are you like sitting and figuring out the answers? Is, are you like involved in the technical, figuring out if it's secure, the website or not? Or it's just like you have this product that automatically. Okay. Scans the, the web and that's it. Uh, okay, so we have the we have once uh, you know for the clients that we service. So what do we in a nutshell? What do we do? We have this product that um, that does this uh, analysis, right? It it um, first we basically configure. We have a product that needs to be configured, so to speak. It has to. We configure in a nutshell. We configure that it has access to your website and it could just continually poke around. By the way, some scans could take. Scans could take anywhere from hours to days, depending on how big a website is. Like what I was talking about before, that there's a lot going on in the background. There could be a ton going around in the background. Uh, there could be 70,000 places to poke around. And we could have just a standard battery of tests could be 40 tests. So there's 40 tests for 70,000 places. And I was had one that just was running forever Sometimes, uh, I, if it wasn't the first one, I would have cut it. Send 20 million requests, a humongous amount. Um, so what do we do? So when 
once the test is over, we basically present the client with issues. We say, this is what we found. This is where we found it. This is how we did it. And this is what you, you can do to remediate it. So we actually, it comes with, it's not just, uh, we don't just say you have a problem. We say, this is, this is where we went. This is what we changed. This is um, what happened. And this is how you can remediate it. Because there are standard responses of how to fix or how to prevent an issue. Uh, for example, um, uh, SQL injections and some of the other things they have uh, a common fix is what they call san sanitizing. Basically, in a nutshell, the, the information that you take from a user, you put it through a, um, uh, you put it through a process where basically it strips out everything, let's say, but um, uh, alphanumeric characters. So any of the, is it the more than, the less than, anything that you could create, or this would be a way to create malicious code, basically in their login name, you could actually stuff it. Me, most normal people in the login and the username and password would put in, you know, a username in my example, you know, LA password and a Lieberman, et cetera. Well, somebody who wants to have a good time is going to start putting in uh, the more than sign, um, script, close it, put in, uh, put in some, uh, some RCE, reverse, uh, reverse code execution, et cetera, uh, close it with the script tag, and put something maybe in the, in the password, something like that, and send it off. So what you should, or what's commonly done is what they call the sanitizer. They basically put it through a process and anything that's coming through on the website, when you're typing in, it's only gonna take, you know, um, alphanumeric. So it'll take letters, it'll take numbers, it won't take funky characters. So if you have, uh, it may take underscore, it'll take underscores and stuff like that. It's not gonna take a more than or less than sign because everybody's already been uh, made aware that that's, you know, an easy, uh, easy injection or sinkhole. So to speak. <clears throat> Ellie, I, I really want to hear your stuff about LinkedIn because it's really important. So I'm going okay, to so here, now I'll we'll transition. Thank and you. anybody who has an interest in the space, um, I'll send my, um, my contact information, et cetera. And we can, uh, or after a chow time, you can stay on and I'll stay on as much as you like. Um, okay, so uh, that's the working part. But to get to the working part, it's also important to have connections. So this is something I did for last last year, semester, et cetera, whatever you want to call it. Um, let me just share my screen. Uh, just a second. There we go. There we go. I think. Um, okay. So this is something I did uh, last year about networking. I got the guy got into um, networking actually. Actually, take it two seconds back. Um, before I made Aliyah, I did very little networking. I did a little bit. I kind of got woken up to it probably the year, a year before I came here, but not in a big way. I just realized that there's something to networking. I came here, and uh, because of lack of uh, exposure or anything else, I mean, I knew my family here. I don't have that much family here. And I had a few friends here, but I don't have that many friends. <laughs> many friends here. I had a few. I had a handful of family and a handful of, thank God, a handful of family. Thank God, a handful of, uh, of uh, friends, but really not so much. So I really needed to figure out like, okay, you know, what am I going to do to, to find a job here? I basically woke up to the uh, networking idea, which I think is very effective. And uh, LinkedIn is is one channel, a one one path to networking. But I will say that it doesn't have to be pure. There's no reason it needs to be purely LinkedIn. It shouldn't be purely LinkedIn. Very often now, um, LinkedIn is kind of, is a bit uh, secondary for me because I have folks, and then I'll kind of see and they'll use LinkedIn for me. But it, it goes. I use uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn should definitely be in your toolbox, for sure. Uh, LinkedIn should be in your tool toolbox. So this is something that I did uh, last year. I think it's completely relevant uh, anytime. So, ah, okay. 
So on LinkedIn uh, and networking in general, whatever I say is, is relevant uh, either way. Um, basically, I found that you want the, a tri, what I call the trifecta. You want to find people that have some, that empathize with you. They feel they feel they understand you're looking for a job. They understand you need your first break. They understand that uh, you need a helping hand. All that stuff. Pre press any of the buttons that that will work. Most people are happy to do it. You just have to make them aware of it. So you want to find folks in general. This is like the most the most effective. The trifecta is when you find somebody who empathizes with you has the capacity to help and is gonna take action because you could you know, kind of get two out of the three, but when you, when you score uh, the trifecta, then you're doing really well because you have somebody who's interested in helping you, somebody in a position to help you, that's my main capacity um, because often you'll see um, on Facebook, somebody says, well, you, you pass along my resume to, I don't know, like uh, Fiverr or somewhere else. Etc. But you know, if they don't really have a, uh, a connection, they don't really know you, and they don't have a good connection or the right place in the company. They also just started. Okay, you know, they emphasize, but they don't really have the much of a capacity to help you. Well, you know, how are they going to push it up, right? What they want them to do is give a push up, sideways, somewhere. You want them to give you a push, so they have to be able to give you a push. Okay. Plus, they could be in the right place. And it's unfortunate, but sometimes you got to find somebody who's going to take the action. You know, he's going to do it, right? It's not going to get lost and he's not too busy. So sometimes it could be the highest person in the company. And I know some of the investment, uh, um, these angel investors, et cetera. I live in Katamo and whatever, but even live in Israel, everybody knows somebody. But if they're too busy and they're not going to do anything, they're not going to get to it for three weeks when the, when the role's already filled or it's, you know, gone... Uh, uh, gone quiet, that doesn't help you. So that's the trifecta. Um, and then you want to ask for, when you have these folks, you want to ask for specific help. Don't be vague. That's very, you, you need to be, you need to be very specific. Um, you could be specific, could be not everything's about asking for a job. And I will say that you never want to see if you see over here. <laughs> you never need to say I'm looking for a job. Anybody who's got some of this will be able to put this together. You don't have to worry about that. If you develop this part right, this part is obvious to them. Nobody misses it. They know that's why, you know, you know, you know, they know that you're not coming to uh, to discuss the sports scores or whatever with them. Uh, it's fine. You know, they get it. anybody who's who's going to be able to be helpful will understand this part. Um, so you want them, there could be a few asks that are very relevant for sure. Um, somebody to review your CV and say, oh, you're using the right lingo. That stuff is outdated. That stuff doesn't make sense. There's certain buzzwords that really they want to see. And you could and you could very well have the experience, but you just don't know how to, um, um, the right terminology, the, way, the right way to phrase it. So very important that you get somebody to look at your CV who knows what the buzzwords are. I'll say like, it's very nice, but it doesn't mean anything to anybody I work with. It's fine, I understand it, but it's not like, it doesn't talk to them. Um, uh, also, you can make a connection, but maybe it's the wrong connection, but the wrong connection is also good to the right connection. It doesn't have to be such a far stretch. You could be very blunt and it's not painfully blunt or anything like that. It's just say, oh, you know, um, oh, that's not you. Is there somebody else that you can, you know, is there somebody else that I should be speaking to that's, that, could, uh, that could help me? It's fine. Anybody, for the most part, anybody who's going to help you is going to help you. If they're not going to help you, they're not going to help you. But nobody's going to bite you. So, you know, just put it out there. Once you've gotten them on the phone, once you've gotten them to answer an email, if they're the helpful client, they'll do it. If they're not the helpful client, they won't do it. But nobody's going to bite you. You're not going to be charged for it. So, you know, just put it out there. Um, certainly, um, they could be helping if it's further along. Certainly, if you, you have a call with the company, you should be trying to get to somebody else in the company so they give you just an idea of like, so what are these folks about? I don't know. My company, I have a feeling if you looked at the website, you have no idea what to do. Uh, maybe that's for all the, all the technology companies. They say whatever they say, and it probably speaks to some of the investors, and I'm not sure if it speaks to anybody else. I'm not sure if it speaks to the investors either, but... Uh, you really need to speak to somebody that has feet on the ground. Um, plus, 
Uh, another thing is, you know, so you'll get somebody to make a contact, and that's the guy that's going to get you a CVC. Um, sometimes you can luck out, but I'll say even in my case, I didn't get my company, I didn't get to myself. The internship that I have, I didn't get to myself. It happens to be in, in my case again, thanks to Han and thanks to Jonathan. I wasn't getting to these uh, companies by myself, for sure not. There's no way I was getting to them. I got through, this was through, uh, this is through contact connection, however you want to call it, but this was not some blind process for me, not at all. Not the initial internship that I had, not the internship that converted to job. The, none of that was through just some blind sending out a, a resume and hoping to land in the right place. Not at all. Um, okay, so what are points of you know connections that can help you? Friends, family, um, colleagues, alumni. If especially in um, especially in the states, maybe I think it's for more friends, family and shul uh, acquaintances in Israel. Um, as you can see by the background, I'm in, uh, I live in Shlaim. I am from New York though. On the New York side, very much if you went to any of the school, you know, any, any college, you could easily hit up alumni. They're, they're every, alumni is always ready to help some other alumni, some, some other alumnus. Um, to the extent that I once made a mistake, I thought somebody was alumni, he wasn't, but he told me that I had got an A for effort and if you could help me, it would have helped me. But it just happened that he got it. Um, so really, you just, uh, you know, hit up just in LinkedIn, type the school, and, uh, and if you went to Yeshiva, just put in the word Yeshiva. And alumni for Yeshiva doesn't make a difference if you went to your same Yeshiva. If you're trying to connect with alumni from Cornell or, or YU or, I don't know, or um, NYU, Columbia, et cetera, so you're going to have to try to get, you know, you're going to have to connect to your alumni. In the Jewish world, if they went to yeshiva, that's alumni. So you could just put in the word yeshiva and that company, et cetera, and you find out any if the company, if anybody in that yeshiva goes to that, any of that, but in the company ever went to yeshiva, poof. You know, they'll talk to you just because you went to yeshiva. It doesn't have to be whatever. It's not like alumni from colleges. You know, it's not, it doesn't work the same way, let's say, with Cornell or Columbia or whatever it is. But for it's a company, if they went to yeshiva, they'll just answer. Um, okay. So, and um, you want to see, you, once you get somebody on the phone or in an email, it works the same for both. You could, you could write an email to the same type of folks. You could try to get them on the phone. Usually start with the email because you're not going to have the phone number, contacts, but it's easy to play a game. You know, first name, that last name, at whatever, um, at whatever company. So you do that. You, sell, you basically say, I've researched the roles. I need some help. I see, you know, I saw you have great experiences. Um, do you have some time to talk with me about a career there, about the industry of the space in general, et cetera, et cetera? That works. I've used it. It works. It's not a hard. It's not a hard, um, it's not a hard sell at all when people respond to it. Um, just in general, when you're targeting, you kind of want to target what makes sense for you. You're going to look at, um, you know, if in the AppSec space, my company's in AppSec, um, Checkmarks is in the um, code review, we're diff different type of places. So you want to kind of have your ducks in order. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to, don't want to make, you want to sound like you actually, have done some research, so like, oh, okay, you know, this guy's uh, this guy's ready to uh, to be in the space to work. So you want to have your ducks in order, so to speak. And then the size, startup, not startup, uh, large company over here. It's everything. Um, and then basically, same idea. You just want to. You really just want to find people that are going to help you. People are going to help you either with a CV, coach you for an interview, put you in contact with somebody that can help you if it's not them or put you with somebody more specifically or contact or, or in the space that's gonna help you. Um, and uh, it's always helpful, especially LinkedIn. That's why LinkedIn is very good for this. This type of re research LinkedIn is very, very good for. You go on there, you see something about them, you see that they went to the same school, you see that they like baseball, they like, uh, you know, they like tennis, they have whatever it is. So you just start the conversation with some little anecdote that uh, that gets their uh, you know that makes some sort of uh, makes a, some sort of a soft start with them, um, 
and uh, and some of the uh, some of the tricks are probably obvious at this point. You know, if you want to, you could just because you don't know the person, don't be bashful about sending them an email. It's hard to make the phone call if you don't know them. You're not going to have the contact information. But an email, who cares? Send them out, but don't waste your time. Do a bit of research, like I said. You send an email. You say, "Hi, I'm Ellie." I'm finishing up or in the middle of a cyber course. I'm interested in an internship. I know that uh, you're in the um, app set space and I'm interested in that. I think it's uh, interesting because if A, B, or C doesn't have to be a long, this is like a four sentence email, just four sentences. Hi, um, uh, you, you, you can't, you, you know, I connect with you for whatever reason. You can't, I think you're the right person for me to, you don't have to use these words specifically. Um, I, uh, you know, I connected with you, or um, I saw that you were that you are you're in a, you have great experience in this space. I'm interested in the space. I'm finishing a program. I'm really interested. Could you help me, or can you point me? You know, can you help me uh, connect either with your company or somewhere else, etc. This is a three four sentence email. Nothing more than that. Um, and for emails, it's you very often first name last name of the company. And then there's this other site, Hunter.io, that makes it pretty simple. You put in the company name there, they'll give you the scheme for, for people's email addresses there, and poof, you're in. Okay. Um, once you, once you um, I guess there's a little more of a, of, a, of a, a mature in the communications or the LinkedIn process, et cetera, you make a contact. Um, it could be on the phone, it could be on the email. You know, just introduce yourself, like I was saying, ask for help, ask, be specific, ask for it. Don't, no, no, no. no. Once you, especially if you get on the phone, ask. Don't be bashful. Again, nobody's going to bite. No, you're not getting charged for the call anymore. Right? Those things don't exist anymore. Just ask. There, if they responded, because I just, you know, to me, this is something that people just don't get until somebody whacks you on the head about it. If they responded, they're interested in helping. They might not be able to help it precisely the way you want, but if they responded, they have some interest in helping. So take them up on it. Just like, don't even, you know, just take them up, just ask, because a response means they're interested, even though it doesn't feel like that to you, for sure, it's always the case. Yeah, there could be one that isn't, but 99% of the time, that's the way it is. They responded, they're interested. Don't get it in your head that, oh, I don't know, I, I, I ask, just ask, just put it out there politely, that's it. Um, and then very important with, um, I do this actually now when I, when I have sales, you know, talk to clients, no open-ended business, nothing open-ended, you know, can we talk next week? We have quote, we have coffee or chat on Sunday, Monday this week. Not when is it convenient for you? No convenience. No convenient. Do you have time this week? Can we speak before the end of the week? No open ended. No convenient for them. Just you know, it could be convenient this week, but not nothing open ended. Say you know, when can we chat? When can we, is there a good time for us to have coffee this week? Is it a good time for us to have? Um, to uh, to chat, etc. When this week, but don't leave it open ended. No open ended business. That's yeah, it's terrible because <laughs> you already got them. You already got them in your corner. Don't, don't let it uh, fall out of you know fall out of uh, play. Um. Anyways, this is some. Uh, I just want to move along. I know it's a few minutes past. Um. This was a bit of something from the past, but it may be coming back, and I would even do this again uh, because. For salespeople or anybody, pretty much if you're in this space, you're going to have, uh, there's always going to be some customer or client contact. I can't see how you could, uh, um, uh, how you could avoid it. Basically, you know, if you could get to a meetup that's in the secure, the AppSec security, cybersecurity space, a meetup is like 10 times more effective in your, if it's in your space, it's 10 times more effective than anything else because people are already there. And you just literally, you could just walk up to them and say, oh, you got coffee, I got coffee. How's your coffee? You know, I'm, uh, oh, you really work in cyber. I'm looking in cyber, you know, that's it. That's the whole, that's the whole process. 
<laughs> you know, I got to figure out a strategy, who to call, where to call, what to speak to. Oh, you got a slice? I got a slice. How nice. <laughs> Can you help me? That's as, that's as, as sophisticated as I sometimes made it. I, I, I tossed away anything complicated. I was like, oh, nice. You're in cyber. I want to be in cyber. Let's talk. So maybe, you know, this isn't a meetup. That, that's why they're fantastic, because basically anybody that's coming to the meetup is already in the space, is already interested, has common interests. You know, you're, you're way out of the game. Plus you see them, you get their name, and if, if they can't talk to you then, which sometimes, which often happens, you say, okay, can I call you? Can I get your card and email and do that? You're way ahead of the game. I'm not saying going to every one of them, but I'm just saying, if it, if it comes up, it's worthwhile. Um, and just, um, you know, just uh, understand what their perspective, your perspective, et cetera. But th that's the, you know, take, take it, you know, my message is, um, you know, take advantage from uh, people that want to help you. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect connection. You could also just be asking them for advice and for information and stuff like that. That will just uh, move you along your way. Plus, uh, ultimately, it's very... Uh, it's very handy, important, et cetera, to have people that will help you uh, succeed. It's just, uh, it's really the way, that's really the, um, the way that you'll advance is having uh, other people that are interested in helping you advance. Questions? Thank Jonathan, you so much. You. Thank you so much, Ellie, for coming and sharing your experience and knowledge with us. Um, people who will follow your advice will succeed. It, this type of stuff, it, it, to some people, it comes a little more naturally than others, but it's learned behaviors. And if you learn to do them, you will create networks and contacts that will help you to get jobs and move forward. So I, I appreciate that you put things out there in such a clear way. Thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I, uh, you know, I learned, I learned a lot from other folks. I learned a lot at, at the school. I think, uh, it just get you, you you just focused it works it's just it works it's just uh it might not be easy and just um if this isn't something that comes naturally to you which is not it was not the case for me still is not the case for me but um you could also just have uh uh set some uh you know mild uh milestones so to speak i'll be frank um networking at events like at a meetup in person it could be a tough game some of them are really easy there are some that are just a friendly cloud i spoke to i'll tell you one story which is i still remember i tell you the guy yassi al yakam uh al Kayam from microsoft he still works there um i came there i slept there i used to live in a frat um which is a wonderful place is it shavis still is a wonderful place but she goes for a frat to um uh to um Herzliya. No, past Herzliya. Um Kfar Saba. Excuse me, to Kfar Saba, right around Kfar Saba. I forgot exact, but they're uh, the next right by Kfar Saba. That's where my my mic's It's a it's a hike. So and based on the uh the buses, etc. This is before the the, the fast train, etc. So it's not that long ago, but the train isn't here that long either. Um it took me at least two and a half hours each way to get there. And I had to um, be mindful on the way back that, you know, bus service cut out. So, and these meetups usually don't get going until 7, 7.30. And already at eight o'clock, I had to be shuttling out, maybe 8.15, 8.30, the latest, but that was it, you know, because I had, you know, coordinating that I should catch a bus at 10 or 11 o'clock still. So anyways, I told this guy, I didn't know who he was. Turns out he was the guy running the event. Um, I told this guy that, uh, oh, you know, it's really nice. I think it's, uh, you know, I really want you to come to this event and that, uh, you know, I know that the, you know, I, I got to meet people if I'm going to be able to, to, to get anywhere, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I said, yeah, you know, I hope it gets going. Something like, I hope it gets going soon because I got, you know, I, I came, it took me a while to get here. I'm probably going to have to turn around in a half an hour and do this all, you know, I do just got off the train and probably have to go right back on the train and the bus, etc. So it turns out he's the guy running the event. So before the event starts, I say this really to his credit, uh, because you don't see this 
you know, it's nice when, very nice when you see it. He said to, this is, you know, at the auditorium, he says, ah, oh, hold on a second, everybody. We have a few people here in the audience that are looking for jobs. And while it's, it's nice for us to learn and, and, you know, to advance in our careers, we need to help other people um, when they need a uh, helping hand, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, everybody, when, uh, you know, when we finish the event, please stick around for a few minutes so, or during the break so that people who uh, uh, could use uh, some help or guidance, et cetera, have an opportunity to talk to you. So there are, there are folks that are really interested in helping. And uh, I'll just say for me, if I go to any of these events or even with uh, phone calls and emails, you could just say today I'm going to do, you know, I just want to target three to five. If I hit, you know, I'm going to try, I don't know, with emails, I'm going to try to get five or six of them. And if two of them crack through to somebody, wonderful, that's it for today. <laughs> you know, and I would do this all the time. And the same thing for if you go to something in person, I'd say, okay, I'm going to speak to, goal is to just talk to five people and just anything. And uh, hopefully one or two of them will respond. You don't have to make it, you, you know what? I would, wouldn't be trying to work everybody in a company or everybody in your room, for sure not. Make a modest goal and, and just go with that. And that's that you'll find it a lot easier. That helped me. Thank you, Ellie. I'm going to close the My recording. Pleasure. Anybody who wants to.